this one's interesting. This is this is a brand called Lanakai, and I really like this. <laughs> I like them all. I don't know why I keep saying that, but this one is unique in a few ways. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the headstock. There's nothing unique about that. It's just, this is a flame maple. That's kind of how I'm starting out. The back of it's just a maple uh, neck. And then this is a really, I think that's, I think that's, um, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like walnut. But those are abalone insets on the fret markers. And then here we get to the real pretty. This is flame maple. And it's got paduke as well, which I mentioned before. I'm a big fan of paduke. I love the red. And this also has a cutaway so you can get your hands to those higher frets which I'm not to that point yet but someday I will be and I don't know if you've noticed it yet this is a travel size uke it's tenor which means it's big but here's what makes it travel size okay that's pretty thin I'll compare it to a normal sized one here's the Zircote one so you can see it's about half as thick. This is a normal size, normal size tenor. It's not gigantic, it's just normal size. And this one, again, the farther away it looks, the thinner it looks. When I hold it right up here, it looks gigantic. But anyway, okay. And you would think being that thin this thing wouldn't have any sound to it the other thing is it's it can be plugged in because it does have a muted sound but it's got a really good sound and these are the original strings which are a little bit muted too and i need to tune it because i'm again this is an older anyways g g g c c c e Okay. So even with these thick strings, it's got just such a lovely, lovely tone. Again, I'll say it. I love this uke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Well, we're we're trundling right along. Thank you for sticking around this long. If you have. Okay. Um, go back to a concert size because I missed it. Oh, come here, you. This one you've probably seen before. I think I've shown it. It's an Enya. It's all plastic. It's the big brother, to, or the big sister. I guess in our family it's big sister. To the uh, black Enya Soprano that I showed you earlier. And this has a black fretboard with orange inlays. 
and it also has that top sound port stick finger in there yeah hello hello this one's a lot of fun this is concert size by the way probably ought to check to see if it's in tune a little flat enough and these inyas they're very affordable and the plastic they come in lots of different colors um, white black I think they have a purple one the orange maybe a light blue one I think I mean like baby blue okay This one, this uke in particular, sounds better if it's finger picked as opposed to strummed. And part of that's just, part of it's, I haven't trimmed my fingernails up today, getting a little buzzing. And actually, the soprano is easier to play, the Enya soprano is easier to play across the neck than this one is. And this is a concert, which is the next size up. Go figure. Okay. Um, And now we're getting into the big boys. We still got nine or ten to go, so <laughs> you might want to take a potty break right about now. This is a Kala. This is the tenor size of the exotic mahogany series. I'm sorry, this is the concert size of the exotic mahogany. Yeah. I've got all four of the exotic mahogany sizes in the Kala, which is that guy. And this, again, is that exotic mahogany and this has the black binding which really sets this one off Just, I don't know if the there is a little shimmer to it if you catch the right if you catch the light just right I don't know if you can see it but the back on this one is the the pretty part and that black uh, stripe right square down the center is what sets it off plus this guy's real resonant practically wants to talk all by himself so and the funny thing is I hardly ever play this guy he just kind of some of them have to kind of get set back away and they're not the front line people I think I tuned this already <laughs> oh boy all right
Now I remember why this one's kind of sitting in the back. He's got a good tone, but he... I'm on a strumming, and then the collas have a fairly narrow nut width, and you can kind of see, I mean, when you compare the size of... That's my index finger. I mean, I can literally... And pardon the... Pardon the... Um, See, I can I can almost cover three strings with with my middle finger, and if I go up, I can. So, what happens is it gets harder to place these these fat fingers. But anyway, okay, it sounds good, but it's this one's for pretty, and it finished out the set, which two of them I've got the sets, the collars and the K mys. Okay, put you back. Get him in here. Oh. Okay. Sound Smith, that one. Got all these on this side. This will give me a chance to re to re put them in their homes too. Okay. Coming around. This is the second ukulele that I bought. This is also an orange wood. Which has it really just kind of a half moon or a crescent moon top. And this one is made out of what's called acacia wood. And it's a satin satin finish, meaning it's not gloss, it's not shiny. It's just like a matte finish. But this is acacia wood, and you can probably see the stripiness in it. And then the side is, I think this guy's all acacia. It's, it's pretty. When I first got it, I got it because it was a, oh, this is a tenor size. And it's the second one I got. The first one I got was that concert size orange wood that's mahogany. And I liked it, so I bought this one. And at first I didn't like it. It just just didn't sound like it had any decent tone to it and there's the abalone rosette and I thought it was too plain but as I've kept it and as I've gotten other ukuleles what I find is that I don't want any that all look the same I mean they can resemble they can you know two dark ones that are shiny and all that as long as they got different grain and and wood tones but anyway, I'm rambling. This guy has grown on me. I was going to try and sell it, and then I just I just couldn't quite trip the trigger. Part of it's because I'm too lazy, but the long... Oh, and I also changed the strings out. That's what I was going to say about this one. I put a low G. All of the other ones have the da-da-da-da when you, when you tune it. This one... <laughs> has a, they call that a low G string, and it gives this ukulele a lower tone overall than the other ones which are in quote, they're still standard tuning, but they're called re-entrant or a high G. This one is a low G. And I didn't like this one when I first got it because I didn't like the strings. It sounded too plunk, plunky, plunky, plunky. And this one on the low G, it's a little plunky. But that's okay because it's a low G. I don't mind it being plunky. And you'll be able to tell the difference. Ah, wow, that was awful. I'm going to try this with my finger picking which is norm I have normally I wear a finger pick. Woo! Really good for going up the nose in the ear and a couple other places I won't mention. I have to keep a special set for those. Okay. Alrighty, let's try this again. And this one's a quiet one also. That was also a reason I didn't care for it at first. But I've grown to like it.
See, that's very smooth, very mellow, and very low toned. It's just very laid back. enough I'm starting to have a little fun with it this is that little riff I played before this is with the lower But you can see I've grown to like this one because it's a different tone, it's a different pitch, and it's mellow. And like I said, I just it's the longer I have it, the prettier it looks. You know? Anyway. Ah, okay, so let's set you right here. Okay. Uh let's see now. Oh, and I'm still working through my tenors. Then I've got four baritones, two gitalalies. Oh, oh, this is one of my new ones. Ooh, ooh. This one is super pretty. I haven't even put the, oh, I'll fall over, Mick. Um, I haven't even put the strap buttons on it yet. This is one, I think I set up a video Anyway, this is Kala, again, and it's got the black. This has the friction tuners instead of the side wings, like that. And it's just, it's kind of cool. And it's interesting because this is a, I think it's a tenor, maybe it's a concert size. I honestly don't remember. Uh, bear with me, I'm looking. Uh, it's a tenor. And for a tenor to have friction pegs, it's just really unusual. And they're black, they're, they're beautiful. And the, um, that headstock is really pretty, you can kind of see. And the fretboard is really pretty. I think, I think those are abalone, they're not terribly beautiful, but here's the pretty part, and it's so glossy, there we go, it's kind of shining up there, this is the maca wood, M-A-C-A -A wood, I'm not that familiar with where it comes from, where it's grown, but I do know this thing is just gorgeous. It's, it's 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 probably the only one I have that I said that about right. I haven't said gorgeous yet, have I? Have I said magnificent? This one's really pretty, and you can kind of see the two eyes there. And this has the swirl, and it also has the stripey. And oh, just amazing. Anyway. <sighs> It's nice to get excited about stuff. Whoops, wrong one. 
this is fairly new that's in the strings I just got this sometime this week like a couple days ago so the strings always take a little while to, to, to break in okay This has a good volume. It's not super loud, but it's not quiet. It's got a good tone. It's mellow. Doggone it. And here's the other little riff. Whoops. I must be getting tired. Um, anyway. See, this one sounds better strumming. Pretty. Some of them you buy for looks, some of them you buy for tone and sound, some of them you buy for the combination. That one's the combination. It ain't the prettiest one I got, it ain't the best sounding, but it's a good combination. Okay, let's start off with, uh, okay, I told you about the K-Mize, where, where I had uh, four of those, the soprano, the concert, the tenor, and the baritone. So we'll start off with the baritones. And we'll start off with the K Mize baritone. So again, that K Mize, which is very um, distinct. It's got the slotted headstock, which those are fabulous. Again, these are the value. This guy costs like 80 bucks. And I, know, I hope I don't sound like I'm bragging about the money, but I just like to give you a little little indication. Oh, what's cool about this one is it gives you that little that little wail and that's on the 12th fret. Oh, something else I've been wanting to show off a little bit too. I'll remember it hopefully. Um, this again is that flame maple and if I can get the sun or the window there you can kind of see might be a little shimmer there but for, oh, and these have the, kind of, they call it like a herringbone or a rope binding, which I really like. And then mahogany or maple, I'm not sure what's dark maple or light mahogany around the, that's the binding. And then here's the back, which is a lot more, there you can see that one a whole lot better as far as the pretty, yeah. And sounds more like a guitar. These sound like a guitar. I'll have to make sure that I tune this one because I haven't played this one in a long time. D G
and of course this is going to sound different. Baritones are tuned like a guitar. The top, the high, the high four strings of a guitar, which is D, G, B, E. Okay, I'm going to put the strap on in this one because. Yep. Normally I play with the straps. That's why I have straps on all of them. If I was going to play for a while, I'd have them all. I mean, I'd have them with the straps. The baritones are too big for me to hold. I could do it, but it's going to sound better this way. Anyway, and I'll compare. Here's a soprano. Ah, dang it. Let go. I think that's, a, yeah. This is a soprano in comparison to the baritone. I'm getting both in the shot. <laughs> so see, there's there's a pretty pretty remarkable difference between the soprano. Let's see if I can get in here. Yeah, barely. It makes it about halfway through the sound hole, top to top. Oh, I forget about that one too. That's my baby. I'll save him for last. Give you a little teaser so you'll have something to stick around for the end for. Okay, this is just the standard baritone ukulele tuning. Alrighty. And I'll play that same little song. thinking about it too much. Alright, that's the K-Mize Flame Maple. I'm out of places to put ukuleles here. Okay, I'm getting myself all boxed in. Won't be able to get out. <gasps> Send the cops! Oh, boom. Okay. This is... Saving the interesting ones for last. Okay. This is also, you guessed it, the exotic mahogany. Looks just like that um, blue tenor, except this one's orange. It looks like the orange concert and the orange soprano. So I've got the soprano concert, uh, tenor, and mahogany. Uh, baritone. They're all exotic mahogany, and the only one that's not this color is the tenor, which was blue. I wanted to try a blue one, and I really like that blue color. Anyway, and I think, oh yeah, this one's pretty, but you almost have to see it in person. And the back might be able to get this is more of a side to side shimmer as opposed to an up and down anyway get on with it Mick I have not played this one in a while and this one I replaced the strings because I didn't like the strings on it which is interesting because out of about 30 ukuleles I've only had to replace the strings on two because I didn't like them and I think maybe one other I replaced the strings just because I wanted to try some well the low G okay tuner Mick
This is the GCEA, the high G, the reentrant G, which sounds weird on a baritone. some time, probably been a couple of weeks. Okay. And as you'll remember from the last one, that was quite a different, uh, this will be quite a different sound compared to the last baritone, but this is the same size ukulele. on the other smaller ukuleles it almost sounded like like a music box this sounds more like a spinet piano to me when I finger pick it like that Improvising too many things, that's why I'm, my brain is all over the place. Oh, let's see here, let's set you on the back side. Oh, I gotta put all these guys away when I'm done showing you. Okay, this is one of my pretty pretties that I'm really, really, really like. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it would be in the top two. This is also a Kai brand, which is like that other concert one that I showed you. This has the slotted headstock, which I love the slotted headstocks. They are fabulous. The nut width on this one is really just, it's just about right. If it was a little wider, it'd be better, but it doesn't have to be. This has those, I think these are maybe perloid inlays on the um, on the uh, fret markers and then like the other Kai this has a sound hole on top and then this is made of solid acacia most of the ones so far have been laminate which means it's like a plywood and the, the pretty woods veneer that they put on top which is how most most stuff is made but this is all solid acacia. And I'm pretty sure I've shown you this one before. But if you look at the bottom underneath the bridge, this is the bridge right here. And if you look at all this, oh, beautiful. And you got the striping. And you got the light and the dark wood. And you've got the sides. Which again, a lot of them kind of look the same, but this is acacia. It's different than mahogany. It's different than amara. It's different than bacote. They all have just a little, and this one has that just absolutely beautiful grain pattern to it because you can see it not only sideways, but up and down as well. I don't know if I can get it to shimmer. Anyway, and then look at that abalone inlay that is probably the prettiest one I've got and when the sun shines on it it just glitters 
anyway this guy and it's a tenor size I'll have to tune it up I haven't played it for a while because I've had it a while and I've been playing all my new ones 2020 been very good to Mick as far as ukuleles Okay, and what I wanted to, I talked about before, well, these are called harmonics, and I had no idea how to do these, but I've always wanted to be able to do them. These are where you, I don't know if you can hear that. That one's coming through the best. It's kind of quiet on this one, but they really, I love those harmonics. Sometimes people that are really good with those will incorporate them into songs. Eventually I want to be able to do that, but right now I'm just happy I can play them at all. Okay, this guy's in tune. I'm going to put, again, I'm going to put the strap on. Oh, I think I showed you this strap. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? And I think it looks really good against the wood it's almost like an Aztec or a, a southwestern uh, design okay this guy's in tune Again, it's got that sound hole on top, so I get it coming up at me too. And you can tell I love playing this one and for some reason even though the nut width on this it's fairly standard I mean it might be just a touch wider but really it's not but for some reason this one and the other Kai I can just play so well I, I'm not sure why but I I love it um, okay here's the finger picking As you can probably tell this one as far as my tenors this is my favorite as far as all of my ukuleles this would I I'd, I'd sell a whole bunch of the other ones before I get rid of this one I love this guy he has his own spot as a matter of fact he sits right next to my chair he's got his own stand I'll take the phone and I'll show you He's, he's the privileged one. Let's see. And he's got his own stand. The other one's kind of laid around 